says that it's commercial parking only along that entire stretch, which is three to four cars um, worth of space from 7 a.m. to noon every day, five days, five hours for six days a week, Monday through Saturday. So we've got basically 30 hours of commercial only usage along that curb, that curb line. Um, I've lived here at that address since about uh, 2004. It's Commercial parking is a commercial service to that restaurant and any others nearby. I think it's almost exclusively Regina. It's always worked fine until now. I don't know why the taking of these spaces for such a critical time period now. 7 a.m. to noon. That's not a time enough for somebody to get away and get to work in a normal. I mean, I usually leave the house at 8:15 if I'm if I'm driving. Um, I think a 9 to noon time might be more appropriate for those of us who function in the neighborhood. But I would argue that that many days a week. Is, is an enormous, uh, you know, <laughs> taking of of, tra of of parking spaces, and I, I don't know why this happened. I don't know whether it came to you. I doubt that it did. I didn't see anything about it in last month's minutes, and I did. I, I know it didn't happen before that when I was on the council. I think the policy should be for this council that if there's going to be any taking of spaces, they should come to the council. If there's going to be a granting of spaces, that's great. That's being a good neighbor. But if there's any taking back of, of spaces, whether that's you know, half a space a day, or three spaces, you know, for half a day, or whatever it is, any, any retraction of the number of spaces in the neighborhood, it should come to the council. I know that you're, you sent the, the bike lane plan back to the city at least twice because it involved too many traffic sp uh, parking spaces that were sacrificed to the to the bike lane plan. And I think that uh, the council has been extremely sensitive, and Ryan has been a very diligent advocate for more spaces. It's certainly it's 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 in my front yard now. Uh, it's where I, I like to park if I can, but I think that 30 hours, an entire curb length for six days a week during the most critical 
um, hours for those of us going to work is, is really beyond reasonable. When and did I, they change this? I don't know the exact date, but I became aware of it, I think, on Friday. I was parking yeah. to bring some stuff to my car for, the, for a long weekend trip. And one of the, the employees at Regina, who I'm familiar with just by seeing them there for so many years, came out and said, oh, you saw the new signs, right? Um, and I said, no. And I looked at it in some shock and said, well, they're tagging and towing, so you've got to be careful. 7 a.m., you know, that's it's very, very difficult. What street where? It's, 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 in the, it's, it's along the Regina curve. It's between Thatcher, along Regina, to North Margin. It's in the, um, Carmine lives on the building to the right. I live on the building here. Um, we know, um, Basically, where everyone double parks. Yes, where everybody double parks because they have to bring their, their, their groceries upstairs and what have you. And frankly, where the commercial vehicles have double parked for many, many years without any trouble at all. <coughs> you notice the fact that uh, the last changes on the, on the, on the, on the parking for uh, visitors to allow residents to park is taking two years already for them to print signs. They take in spaces for five inches. We had spaces for <coughs> everything away. It kind of falls into the scheme of you know ticketing and tagging and, and towing. You know, it just continues to be the trend. The trend is, it's a very good uh, a means of revenue. Why change it? You know, and they keep on changing it against us to make more revenue. But, but I think Bill's point goes to is, is, is there needs to be some sort of process or protocol before you take these spaces away. They need to come before neighborhood, and I agree with that. I mean, the bike lane issue is a perfect example. We took, we're, we were arguing about four spots that were taken. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, you know, four or five meetings later. Across the target. Right. right. Here you show up one day, and there's three spots missing. That's three less spots in the neighborhood <coughs> for a neighborhood our size. Exactly. So, you know, I also thought about how we were very we were <coughs> very quick to approve um, Regina's request for an additional cordial addition to their to their beer and wine. And we, you know, we, we see them as a good neighbor. I don't know who's behind this. But I, I see it as, as not so neighborly to, uh, I, I assume they're advocating for their commercial spaces in front of the building. What so. is it on Canada Street? Is it 8 to, eight to 12? Yeah, it's, eight. I think it's 8 to 12 on Canada. Yeah. See, they're more likely to give you commercial parking than residential parking because they can tag and make more money. Right. Mm, so it's a good point. If you asked, if you had an area where you wanted to take and make it commercial, they would lean more towards that than anything. That's a great point. That's a great point. And on a Saturday also. Do you think it's a safety issue? Do you think it's a fire? Uh, no. We've had a lot of fire. Our building has been, you know, the site of several false alarms. You know, so the full fire response has been there. And the, the, fire has, the fire has no problem getting there. The curb cut around the sharp corner at, at Regina, uh, coming from Thatcher and then turning the left into the square, is an area where they try to keep clear so that they don't scrape. Squeeze, yeah. Right? Squeeze. But um, the, the crosswalk marking is, leaves plenty of room. It's perfectly marked for the fire engine to get past this you vehicle. Like double parking, that doesn't um, You know, that's a great question. Both double parking, usually the cars are mostly attended, or the people are within a, few, a minute or so of getting back to their but car. You said, like, with commercial deliveries, there was... That's a great point, and that might be the rationale for the commercial um, curb um, parking. That's possible. Um, I don't know. I guess it's part of the thing that Bob tells me. I have no idea why they took it, how it happened so fast. If I hear back from Commissioner Tinnell, I'll, I'll follow up with your uh -huh. question and see if we can get some more answers as to why those three spots were taken without any notice. Thank you very much. Is that it, Ryan? That's it. Thank you, buddy. Um, and, uh, public Safety Committee report from David Mons. Uh The normal policy is that we do not hold a Public Safety Committee meeting for the month of uh, July, so the next meeting will be Thursday, August 1st, but I just have a couple quick notes. I couldn't help but notice within the last week on the newest weekly police blog that there were two or three break games all within very close proximity to one another on the 280 block, I believe it was, of Hanover Street. So you don't want to speculate, but to see that, I think it was all the same day or maybe back to back days, close addresses all on the same street, you do, you know, begs the question is this related? So hopefully we'll get some answers at the next public safety meeting on Thursday, August 1st, right in this room at 6.30 p.m. And even though this is not a public safety committee um, point, I just wanted to mention I have talked about some trash issues in the North End in the past, including at the last meeting here last month. Um, the head of the Beacon Hill Civic Association um, Trash and Sidewalk Committee, we had a follow-up to our meeting. Um, he sent an email out last week, right before the holiday weekend. So we're talking about next steps. Once again, neighborhood representatives from Chinatown, North End, and Beacon Hill trying to arrive at a consensus. Uh, the Public Works Department did send them an email saying that they would like to be part of the process, early on in the process. 
And um, so I think the head of the Beacon Wilson Association was waiting for other people to write back, uh, those that attended the meeting last month. And hopefully the Chinatown residential survey regarding trash and recycling, like we did in the North End, like the residents of Beacon Hill did not too long ago. Hopefully that survey will be up and running online sooner rather than later. Then once again, we can get those results. Again, try to arrive at a consensus and bring the results to the appropriate people at City Hall at the very least. That's it. Thanks, David. Mr. President, may I uh, touch upon the public safety issue? You should may. Thank you. Uh, for the record, my name is Dan Toscano. I live at 78 Prince Street. But I speak on uh, interesting. Uh, Mr. March, you mentioned 280 Hanover Street. Uh, I represented uh, Pinkberry at 283 Hanover Street, but also speaking on behalf of the resident, I noticed that their windows uh, have been broken this weekend and someone went by with a pipe. I certainly like to think that it was just maybe some individuals had too much to drink and smashed the windows. However, it's more likely someone may have had an issue with this particular establishment and, and uh, took their frustrations out on these windows. Is the neighborhood council maybe considering or uh, maybe consider considering uh, speaking with the Chamber of Commerce or sending a letter to the Chamber of Commerce? Okay, what is the Chamber doing to maybe protect our businesses, keeping the businesses safe, keeping the patrons that come out of our businesses uh, safe so they can enjoy uh, the, the, the quality of life we have in the neighborhood? I believe I can answer that question, Daniel. Next month, um, I believe that uh, Chucky Wilson, Sergeant Lima, and um, uh, Captain Lee are all attending our next chamber meeting. Oh, great. Can I make it? Um, can I make it? Point of the record. Not all the businesses in our thing. You do not all participate in the chamber right. meeting. Right. Yeah. So it does not represent the soul. It represents a few good people. It doesn't represent everybody else. It doesn't represent me. It doesn't represent my other businesses. Not everybody stands with that point of view. So. That's an issue that we need to come to terms with the fact that the Chamber of Commerce represents itself and the few people that, that join, not the rest of us, okay? Thank you. So hey, the you. the Chamber of Commerce has 126 members. Yeah, many of yeah, them are not the members of the, of the business community, including its president, so, okay. The president? Well, I, I, that, that had nothing to do with it. Well, I wanted to see that's, that's you addressing yeah, Police protection this neighborhood. Well, those are just the answer, next month. The answer, which is the wishes she works for is a member of the city. Which is not a part of the district. This is what you work for. It's not a part of our community. You have no kind of hope or say on what we do in our community. And most of us that are businesses here, and the 126 people that are listed in the Chamber of Commerce are not members of the Chamber of Commerce, including my business, which is an infection on trademark uh, law. Okay. And Donna Franny is not a business owner in the North End, should not be the Chamber of Commerce president. Thank you. John Fregman, Greenway Commission, please. Yep. All right. So uh, the Conservancy is, we're, they're partnering with a lot of North End businesses to bring free fitness classes to the North End parks. Um, CrossFit is going to be sponsored by City Sports, and they will be on Wednesday evenings. Body Waves is hosting Tai Chi on Friday evenings and yoga on Saturday mornings. And Ali Balasari, a North End resident, and uh, she teaches at North End Yoga and BHAC, is hosting Cardio Pilates every other Monday evening in this month and next month at 6.30. Uh, we also have a, the Greenway Activity Van in the North End Parks from 11 to 2 on Thursdays and Fridays. And as some people probably have seen, to address the neighborhood concerns with uh, shade in the North End Parks, we planted trees over there. And we also still have those umbrellas on order that are hopefully arriving soon. There's a ton of other events that you can see at rosekennedygreenway.org, uh, especially the Boston Public Market, which is going on, the fence exhibit, uh, photography exhibit, and the open market. That is all. Thank you, John. So we're going to get to the agenda. And first is the French Prince of Columbus Park Day here, um, represented by Joanne Hayes Ryan. Did I say that? I always mix it up. I apologize. You got it. So she's here to uh, discuss the uh, project they're going to do over on um, the uh, uh, Congress Park. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to this meeting. Uh, I'm the president of the Fence of Christopher Columbus Park. And for those of you who may not know much about the park, uh, first of all, two of our founding members were founded in 2001. One of our founding members is on your board, Ann Devlin, and she was on our board for many years as fundraising chair. And Victor Brogna was also another founding member was founded when the park was redesigned in 2000. And the mayor invited um, surrounding businesses and neighbors to create this friends group. And the idea was that 
the neighbors would help take care of the park, and that the abutting businesses would contribute financially every year to the park for the maintenance. So when it, when it started, it was a small group, but over the years, we've really grown significantly. Uh, we have approximately 300 members, and those are businesses and neighbors, people who live on the waterfront and in the North End. Uh, when the park was redone in 2000, if you're all familiar with it, it's a circle area. It became this stamped concrete that, or stamped asphalt. And of course, the intention was to put in brick, and of course, they made out of money. So the friends looked at this and said, it looks like a parking lot. You know, it was terrible. So the city's solution was to carve out a circle that's about 24 feet in diameter, plant three lovely trees, put in some nice perennials, but it was too late to add any water to it. So every spring, nature does its thing, and the perennials look fine. Luckily, the trees are very robust, so they survive the summer, and they look really good. Pretty soon, this early July, we've had a lot of water. By August, it's going to start to wither, the plants look awful, and September is just terrible. So we looked at what can we do. We fundraise for events in the park. Our major project, I'm sure you're all familiar with blue lights on the trellis. We just had our 10th year of lighting the trellis, and that costs us about $25,000 a year. And we have to recycle the lights or change the lights in about four years' time. That, that cost goes up to $40,000. So that's lighting the trellis and lighting uh, 14 trees. It's become, I think, as you all know, an iconic image of the city of Boston. We do that. We also, our members totally care for the Rose Garden. The city provides some mulching, but our volunteers do all the work, and you know how beautiful it is. Uh, we also host events in the park. We had just had our Independence Day last on Saturday, June 29th, complete with a parade through the park. And the marching band was the children. Uh, NEMPAC came and gave them instruments and, and accompanied us with some music. We had Uncle Sam on stilts, and we had uh, Magician, and so a day of entertainment for the little kids, and that cost us about $3,500 because it's all volunteer hours, and the only money we're spending is for the entertainers and the balloons and things like that. We also do a Columbus Day event this year. It'll be on Columbus Day, and it's very similar, different entertainers, but similar to this. Um, we have our uh, Harbor Cruise is on the 17th. I think you would all love to come. It's only $45 a person. Uh, it's from uh, 6.30 to about 10 o'clock, and it's wonderful hors d'oeuvres and a cash bar, and that helps fundraise for the Columbus Day event. And then we also do potluck cleanup, we maintain that. And we're very vigilant about issues of safety in the park, homeless, the sanitation, keeping it clean. But it's got a lot of love, and it has, I think, from the day this group was founded, it was a lot of love poured into this neighborhood. So again, going back to this circle, if you're not familiar with it, I've got some, some pictures that show you just how lovely it really is. Uh, one of them is taken from the Marriott window, so you look down on it, and you can see how much space there is around it, that if you can cleverly uh, redesign this space, it would, it would change the park. The rest of the park is so pretty, and this is just an eyesore. So first we apply to the Blossom Fund, uh, and that is the Boston Committee of the Garden Clubs of America, and we applied for a grant to them, and we got a grant for $10,000. It was the first grant application we ever did, and we got it. Then the City of Boston, Beautify Boston uh, program, we applied to them for a $25,000 grant, and we got $20,000. So that was our second grant, so we're two for two. Now, we worked diligently with the City of Boston, the Parks Department, and they've been just wonderful working with us. Because we had this idea, but we didn't know where to begin. And so they helped us figure out, well, where do you, you know, how do, how do we get a landscape architect? And how much is this going to cost? Are we looking at something that's 500,000? And we didn't have a clue what it would be. And with the chief landscape architect, Lisa Myers, she and uh, Alberson Landscaping, they did back of the envelope kind of estimates for us. It's subsequently been refined. We're still not really sure the exact cost, but it's somewhere around $80,000. And if you look at that picture, you can see that the benches, they face away from the circle. So you're passing the circle. You never interact with that space. It doesn't have any, it doesn't draw you to it. It almost repels you. So the idea was we sat down and talked about, as I have a committee, 
committee of about seven of us. Um, and what was the vision we had for this? We know what it is, but we don't know what it will look like. So we wanted a place that was a destination in and of itself. Kind of like the old movies, some of you were way too young to remember this, Meet Me at the Billhorn. Well, this would be Meet Me at, and we are now calling it the Urban Oasis, the short the Oasis. Meet Me in Columbus Park at the Oasis. Um, we want kind of a mini park within a park, and very restful. You know what it looks like there on a busy Saturday and Sunday afternoon. It's wonderful, it's vibrant, but there's so many people home on very few benches that have any shade. So we want to incorporate more shade without restricting any of the view in the market. Um, and safety issues, of course, are very important. The design, the park isn't a rigid shape. If you think about it, it kind of swoops like this. Even the, the trellis, you know, is soft, it's curved, the walkways is not harsh. Everything about it is pretty soft. So we want to continue that feeling so that it would be free form, no harsh edges, and something that people can meander through. You've got to be very conscious of the walkway from the Marriott to the North End and from the Greenway to the ferry. So there's so much traffic, we're not going to impede, want to impede anything. But I, we, we see a place where people are kind of hustling through, and maybe they even get to the space and they slow down a little bit. And maybe sit down and take a little, a little break. Uh, paths, um, and then benches, small benches for two, something unique. and very special to this oasis feeling. Um, and again, the benches have to be positioned in a way that they face the spray fountain, they stay, face the water, so that you still get all the views. Um, again, I talked about shade. Stonework, you know, something interesting there that would give a low wall, so because it is all very flat, so maybe something that gives some dimension or height to it, again, without restricting. So we have all these visions, and then it's all right, now where do we start? Well, we had to create a request for qualifications, which we sent out at the suggestion of the Parks Department. We, um, we have our own project manager that assigned to us, which is huge. She's a landscape architect, she's wonderful. So she suggested three companies. So we sent our RFQ that we created, with again, her help, out to three companies. One declined to submit, they said our budget was too small. And um, it is very small. It was twelve thousand dollars that we're saying would be for the landscape architect to design this, help us source it, um, to get the contractors, materials, and then follow the whole uh, the whole project. So two did respond. We met with them. They presented wonderful presentations. Both were very skilled. Uh, but we went with one Bealta three design out of Brookline. It just had a little more energy about the project and their vision that we felt like they were on the same page we were. I think there were seven of us who sat down with them um, and their whole, their family, uh, it's a family company, they're from South America and the whole family has a history of being an architect, either architect or landscape architect, so it feels like it's in their blood. So they are coming tomorrow. We met with them a month ago and, okay, gave them the, the deal and well we need to move this all pretty quickly so we said well how quickly can you give us three alternatives and again our project manager Sherry from the Parks Department said can you do it in a month <laughs> and they kind of looked at each other you know, just sketches just kind of ideas of what you want well they agreed and today was the deadline to submit to the committee and tomorrow they're coming to present at our monthly meeting uh, and they actually gave us four sketches. And they're very conceptual. They're difficult for us to understand. We work with uh, Sherry on it. I know their presentation will be great tomorrow. But just the ideas of what can we do with this space. So from there, we'll hone it down and change it. But I really, we really want the neighborhood to know what we're doing. And, when you, you know, and I'll keep you updated. But it's, it's such an exciting project. And um, that we, we're really, um, you know, thrilled with it. To make the other, uh, if it is 8,000, we've got 30 from grants. To get the other 50, we've got money in the bank, so Friends of Christopher Columbus Park, and then we'll go and, and get corporate donations. And also we'll sell benches, um, you know, people want to find that. So it's a wonderful project, and I hope you all love the park as much as we do, and I thank those of you who are supporters and members for your support. 
because we have a great time doing something we love. So we're all very lucky. When are you going to have Monday meeting tomorrow? Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, 6 30 at the Mariner House. Um, what are you guys doing? Second Tuesday of the month? Right? Second Tuesday of the month. So if you want to come and see these designs and give us your input, and that's what we want is people's input. Um, we had sent out a newsletter about that, and right away somebody fired back and they think about safety, think about you know, things that are too high, women need to feel safe walking through the park. So we all have our ideas, and we know what we think, but there's never, you can never get enough ideas, never get enough criticism, um, and good constructive criticism. That's who we are, what we're doing, and hope I'll see somebody tomorrow night. Any questions? Anyone have any questions for Joanne? No. Okay. okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much, Joanne. Mm -hmm. Next on the agenda is 33 Snowville Street. Filed for the playing field to change the legal occupancy from two residential units to four residential units as part of the reason for the full renovation of the building. Okay, everybody. My name is Julian. I have a picture here of the building. Yes, sir. Anybody else want to? This is your building, right? So what happened was sometime in 1988, I think the owners changed it to a two-family. Probably the safe pass as everybody's done it. And uh, I'm just going to turn it back exactly what it was. I'm not going to touch anything on the outside. I'm going to store it. And uh, that's it, basically. I'm not going to do any other. Uh, Work to it other than the inside of the building. When are you looking to start work? I'm already started. Hopefully, we'll have it done by the fall. So there's there's four units in there. Four units. Active units. It's always been four, but they just they for change whatever reason, they two. Two. Yeah. So it's not two. It's not two duplexes. No. It's four units. It's four all. units. Four units. Yes. So you're just legalizing what has been. What was there? Been being utilized yeah. as, yes. yeah, there were four meters there, there were four gaps. Yeah, there. there were four bathrooms. There were four bathrooms, yes. <laughs> Believe it or not. This was a common practice. Though. Well, everybody did that. Yeah. Everybody changed them into a two or three. They saved the they saved the um, hatches that way. And if you notice, most of the buildings when they were built were all three family. That's why when you walk around the north end and you see that ring, these were all added on. All these top floors in the whole north end were added on at one point. They were all built as a three. And they add all those floors, and that's why when you look up and you see a ring around the building, these were all added on at some point. Yeah, you can see that. You can even see sometimes some of, the, some of the buildings you even see a different color in the brick. Yeah. If you look around and take a walk, you'd be surprised. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. There's any questions? I'm happy to answer. Just cosmetics. Yes. No, not at all. Not at all. Do you have to have like, a dumpster outside? No. All done. Yep. Yep. Actually, we have a staging in now. That's coming down on Thursday. And that's it for the outside of the building. It's all done. All finished. Actually, the front of the building was collapsing. We had to fix it. It didn't look as but it was. They totally neglected the building. Actually, there were still full chain toilets in there. Everybody remembers the full chain. Yeah. 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 yeah, I look for that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Anyone in the audience have any questions? A robust audience here. Yeah, she's quite nice. I have a motion to support um, converting the other um, to a four unit. Second. So, Ann's motion. Uh, John, second the motion? to uh, support the uh, change of legal occupancy at 33 Snow Hill Street to two residential units to four residential units. All in favor? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.
of the above restaurant, above reference address from restaurant offices and 16 residential units to 20 residential units. Thank you, Mr. President. For the record, my name is Taylor Toscano, attorney at law at the law office located in 62B Commercial Walk, East Boston, Mass., the area 2113. I represent to my immediate left, Jeff Caragalat, who is the owner and operator of the, uh, the residential units located at this particular address, 55-57 uh, Commercial Street, I mean, on uh, Washington Street. For those who uh, may be a little more familiar with the former Tetris uh, restaurant building, we were here before this group not too long ago where um, Jeff had the opportunity to purchase these, uh, not only this particular building, but the buildings that are on Cooper Street. What we've done over the last year is uh, take these dilapidated properties, rebuild them, uh, make them luxury apartments, make them all uniform with each other, uh, beautiful windows, all brand new windows, the front of the buildings are all pointed, doorways are all, uh, door treatments are uh, uniform with each other, so it looks very nice of those who went put down there, took away the dumpsters in that area, uh, cleaned up the area very nicely. What we've done with this particular building the last time we were here, one of the last times we were here, we changed it from 12 residential units to 16 residential units, and we took away the function hall of Techies restaurant, which was all located on the second floor. We left the commercial space after talking with some of the community members. A lot of community members wanted to keep the commercial space. Jeff certainly wanted to keep, uh, commercial, keep the commercial space, get the restaurant in there, get some other commercial uh, businesses in there. For well over a year, we, we've tried. Uh, unfortunately, I'm successful in getting a, a good quality uh, commercial commercial tenant in this property, so now we want to change it to eliminate the commercial space and make it four residential units. It would be four one-bedroom units, all low, uh, big sizes of the units. One of the units is uh, over 1,100 square feet. There's two units that are seven high, over 700 square feet, 770 square feet, and there's one right around 690 square feet. Uh, right as a residential unit, certainly no work needs to be, I think some work to the outside of the building to make separate entrance for one of the particular units that are now Washington Street, but most of the work uh, to the outside is what you're going to see, but just change the, the occupancy. What's important, what we're going to do in this particular uh, building, which we've heard over the, the last several meetings uh, when we came before, is the problem with the trash. There's not a lot of residential units. We are creating a room for trash. It's, uh, it's, it's, been, it's been created, so residents will of bringing the trash into this trash room, and the building manager brings it out during the, the times when the pickup is, uh, is done. Also building an exercise room on that first floor. So with that said, it's relatively, uh, hopefully it's as simple as the previous uh, project you just heard, but that's what it is in a nutshell. The four new, so there's four new units now? Four, so it would be four, 16 to 20. Yeah. And what are they going to be? Studios, ones, two, one threes? Down. Mostly ones. If you said that, I apologize. Yeah. Yeah. One, one's the studios. How many units are they all together in the building? Oh, okay. so in the Cooper Street buildings, too? There's 32, 36, 36, 16 of that one particular building. 16 in one building. One. In the big building. So, how many buildings are they all together? There's one. Oh, so four, four buildings. So, well, we that building? There's actually, I mean, if, if you look at how they're built, there's Five buildings, but there we count as there's four buildings. There's uh, 55, 55, 57, 59, and then the the big building, which I would call the North Washington Street building. So that's the one you're working on, North Washington Street. That's the one I'd like to work on. I tried to put restaurants in there. The only person I could get to go in there was the Cumberland Farms, and it was like that. Was what about parking? We talked about parking before when you guys first came up. There was no, you have it, you have the parking lot across the street, that's not what your tenants use. Uh, yeah, so we, we can put, I mean, it's such a small area, you can put four cars in there. Mm -hmm. You can put about eight cars there. Yeah. Well, you, you could, but then they'd have to share keys. Mm -hmm. And um, that became a problem. I mean, we're, to be honest with you, we, we over the past year, we're trying to work our way through problems. Uh, you know, Brokers put some undergrad students in here, which were a disaster. Um, we tried to determine whether it's our people putting trash out and the neighbors putting trash out. It was a little of both. 
so we developed a trash room. Um, no, no, I don't want to talk about parking. Wait, so, so, so the parking, so, 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 so the reason why I raise the question is because most large projects in the world can require parking. You guys haven't built an adjacent to it that has parking, and you refuse to call it what it is. You keep on going around the bush on it, and it's a perfect avenue for us to have some parking. Even if there's four parking plus, if there's six parking plus, we, you know, we had a long conversation to build our parking, have a big issue with parking. Yeah. How come we're not using some of that for parking? So we have, we tried to do the key sharing and it was a disaster. But that's not a, that's not the issue. So that's, we have that's, not, that's not the issue. The issue is you have a, a big piece of property. We had demanded from other properties. The seniors demanded from other properties. We wanted to why since you have the space adjacent. Having you alleviated the parking problem with some parking for some tenants. If it is four, it's four. If it is five, it's five. If it is six, it's six. Whatever the capacity that holds. And it holds more than four. Uh, you know, I've been there for, I think what the beauty of this particular location is, and uh, off-street parking is certainly uh, one of those violations that we see very regularly when we talk about residential units in the neighborhood. But the beauty of the city is, George, especially in that area, we're right across the street from Haymarket Train Station. No, I know, but that doesn't yeah, mean that we, that we, do have, we do have an area that um, Jeff has said, we do our best to utilize it in the best way where it doesn't cause a problem. Um, in Force plus, I think we can pretty much heard it's probably the best possible use for this. But why isn't that uh, use address? For, why, why don't we use the force plus for, to address this issue? Because you keep on adding apartments. Oh, you add a bunch of apartments. There weren't 36 apartments here. No, it's being right. used. Well, why don't we call it what it is and we make sure that it's tied up to this property so we don't have any, you know, we don't have any further development in the area which takes parking away from us already. We already have 36 apartments there. You probably put another bunch of apartments there again and continue to take away from the parking in that area, which is very residential in the North End, and this, this subject hasn't been touched. You know, and, and every time you come up, at the beginning was the fact I was here at the meetings, and I live there, so I'm, I'm in a body. I have a concern. Street, right? Yeah, I have a concern. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we, and so we, let me finish. And you went about the bush with that because it was under probate court, because of this, because of that, because of that thing. So you put it aside. You come up again, you put it aside again. When are you going to call this what it's going to be or what it is? Because you're not going to have an empty building there. You're not going to put a park there for us. We have an issue with parking, and you continue to touch the ball and not address the parking issue. Which everybody else is expected to, uh, 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 you know, all the other projects that we have are expected to be much more projects with less apartments. Okay. Well, there's not too many projects in the neighborhood that can't put parking. I understand we have a small. Well, we got one on. We have one on Hanover Street right now. It's much more. Uh, the Hanover environment is a much smaller uh, project that's been, been going on for 12 years and yeah. they, they have yeah. that time they're putting parking because yeah. otherwise we won't let them carry on. But why would we make an exception in this case? That's my uh, question. If we're making an exception in this space, we have a small little lot that accommodates about four spots. And it doesn't have four spots. Well, I mean, George, I, mean, I understand what you're saying. <coughs> you want we can put in 12 spots if you want. Well, you, you can put four other, spots. And you're you know, you you adding four apartments, four, four spots. So you well, got I, I, think, I think the issue, and George, correct me if I'm wrong, but in support of what he's saying, I think that the, the fear is that um, dodging the question of are you committing those spots with, these, with, these, with this project, with this building, <coughs> or are you not committing to continue in forever? to have these spots <coughs> designated to these buildings because you have other plans for that parcel. Oh, I'm happy to do that. I, I, I'm sorry, I misunderstood the question. No, I'm, I'm absolutely, the, the, the space, no, there's no, there's nothing else. When I first came here, you wanted the dumpsters gone and the grease trap and all the other crap that was in that area, we did that. I am absolutely willing to commit the parking, those parking spaces, my problem was I can only get four cars in there without creating havoc. So I'm happy to commit that parking. We're not going to build a building there. We don't want to build a building there. That's the concern. Oh, uh, absolutely. That, that, that's part, uh, of concern, that's part of the concern. Part of the concern. Part of the concern is. Yeah, that, absolutely. I mean, I can't. I'm not going to commit them to those four units. I'll commit them to the project. That's the exactly, that's a concern. We have 36 apartments within half of the four, but we're not four more, or it puts that, it was so 32. If I could put eight there, there, I'd love to put eight there. Um, I, I, I don't think you across the street would like to see eight there, but if I could, we tried putting, I think it was six or seven cars there, and all we did was have a headache. At the end of the day, from being in that part of the community and being an active member on that part of the community, we all know we have a parking issue. 
it's getting worse, then we keep on adding apartments, okay? Now you're adding more apartments. If it is four spots to alleviate the issue, so be it. If it is six spots to alleviate the issue, so be it. But they need to be allocated to what it is and attached to this in order for you to get our support. We are not going to support something without parking any longer at that location. We already supported it and you're coming back to us for more. So we'd like well, that to be a cut. You have a commitment that those four spots will be designated to those rental properties that... Well, can, we get it? can we get that on paper? Sure. All right, let's get that on paper. And, and, and you know, I think that, uh, I don't know where the rest of the panel stands, but I, I'm willing to make a, a motion to support this petition to change the occupancy from 16 to 20 apartments, as long as those, that additional space is granted for parking, okay? Parking only. Uh, we like, we like the papers, and it's on, it's on the record, okay? We like the record, we like it, we like the documents. I'll, I'll have it for you. And then you get what you want, and the rest of the community can rest uh, assured that sure. some parking, uh, this large project, this last resident, rental residential project, they have some parking alleviation for the rest of us who live there. Again, does anyone else have any other questions? Phil, that's a question. Hold on, Phil, I'm sorry. Can you talk to kind of like the um, the history of the project as it pertains to affordable housing and whether or not we can go to the trigger? We didn't trigger any affordable housing, um, especially on the, on the Cooper Street one. It had to be over a certain number of units. And each of the property, even though if you look at it as a whole, it's really not. They're in separate buildings, so you didn't trigger any, any affordable housing um, issues. The Texas building was already over the threshold of the uh, the affordability. Um, so the BRA has not. They were grandfathered into. No, BRA has not indicated to us that you know if this falls under the affordability issue, um, and that would have came up the last time, and, and, it, and it hasn't. You know, and they, if this came up with the buildings on Cooper Street, and um, so the two Cooper Street ones and the corner ones, but they were. Consider it separate buildings. They are separate buildings with separate addresses, so it just did trick. They all have, they're all separate entrances, yeah. separate fire alarm systems. Yeah. The city wanted it that way. Uh, we actually like the idea of keeping those buildings separate. They're not connected in any way. They're all separate buildings, separate addresses. Uh, the yeah. Cooper Street buildings are all walk ups. There is an elevator in the uh, big building. Before, before you guys bought one of the statues on two floors, how many units are there was 12 um, residential units um, with the function hall and the commercial space. And then it went from 12 to 16, and now eliminated the commercial space on the first floor to 16 to 20. So I added a little number. Anna, do you have a question? Can we supply parking for the other units? Like you say, you have to put about 32 and a half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have, we keep, we've given no parking to anybody. The uh, majority of people that do have cars, and I would suggest that I think half of them do, are doing this reverse commute parking at the big garage that went across the street. Mm -hmm. But I thought you had to, at one, if you had 10, uh, 10 units or more, you had to supply parking. Because that, the Hyman department was held up because for quite a few years. So I, I actually built a, or helped bail the Department or project, and that's a pre existing non conforming, I would call it a mess. Uh, we actually, with the guys who got the staging off the we, street, we turned him down many times. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because he wasn't supplying parking, but then he bought the American Legion, and, and that's how he got food. He had a None of the Cooper Street buildings uh, to that trigger um, an off street parking. I think the only violations that we have, if I can remember correctly, and I'll have to go back, was just changing the occupancy, and then I think one Cooper Street building was increasing the living space, and then we, we had a violation of off-street parking lot where we went from two residential buildings, I think, to eight, which is the client building. So, if you can address this issue with the with the with, the, with that, with yeah, that, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. On paper I'm, and, 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 you know, I think can I think we that, look, uh, so just to be clear, so. The, the big building, the, the 20 unit building, mm -hmm. 50, I think it's 55 North Washington right. Street. Can we tie that to the parking? Because the, the small Cooper Street buildings mm -hmm. are three, four units. Yes. Okay. That's, so that's where we're expanding the office. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking yes. about the, we're not talking about the other properties. We're talking about the fact that yeah. we've had a huge project there. Nice. 
Now you're coming back to ask for more, and what we'd like in exchange is we'd like to alleviate the issue that you cost of parking. We're going to aggregate it even further by adding four apartments, so if you can add four or six plots or whatever you can add there, yeah. and you can make sure that that is stated as the adjacent parking for that property, and we have it on record. It's on record there. Yeah, we have it on record on paper. I think we can support, you know, we can, we can vote on your application with, with that contingency. I have one question. Sure. When did you guys come to, to convert the previous? Was it a couple of years ago? Two years ago. So, uh, this will roughly, be, two, roughly two years? It's got to be at least yeah. two years. And you've exhausted all avenues for the commercial? The only person I can get in there is Cumberland Farms. And when I talk to people around here, all I heard about was 7 Eleven. I got a, and, just, and, just, I, and quite frankly, I, I just thought that having people coming in and out of there, my daughter lives in the building, you know, at all times of the night, I just, it was a bad concept. One, yeah. one thing to, to, to not to be sure something, but um, the situation in that corner is much better than it was. Yeah. It's, it, aside from the issues that you have with garbage and the parking issue, it's made, it's made an improvement to that end of the neighborhood. Now, you are, if you say you're addressing the garbage issue by having the garbage room and you can address the parking issue, yeah. you're going to be that much better of a neighbor. So yeah. you can do that, you're going to make a lot of people happy. And a lot of people are concerned because, again, we do see the, spot, the place being used as parking. We don't see that stress uh, address as parking. And the concern is, we're going to have another 12 apartments here. We're going to have another 10 apartments. No, 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 another eight no. apartments. I, 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 and, I'm and, happy and, to do what you guys and want. And it's tough to carousel around the neighborhood every day when you keep on adding another horse to the carousel. So enough, there's no room for it. Does it, anyone have a question? I have one more question. Okay. What's, uh, what's an outlet? Is it's it's a a first, yeah. floor, first floor of the It's probably a studio. Yeah, yeah. So like a those are the bedrooms. Yeah. As I looked at the plans, they're all labeled as an alcohol. Is it because there's no windows? No, there has to be. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So this is an open, it's, it's technically a studio. This is open. To the this is all glass. So it actually gets an enormous amount of light. Yeah. So it's technically this is a studio. It's just, it's just a big studio. A fancy name for it? Does anyone want to uh, make a motion? I'll make a motion to support the application. Wait, we had one before. I before um, I wanted to ask more questions. We wanted to ask a question, so I want someone to form a motion. I'll make a motion to support the application to expand 5565 North Washington Street from uh, 16 apartments to 20 with the contingency that the, what's the address on the? 55. I think it's 55. So what's the address of the parking lot? Oh, oh, yeah, I have no idea. I'll, I'll make sure that, the, 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 okay. okay. I'll make sure that this is where the adjacent The adjacent yeah. lots yeah. on Cooper Street and, uh, and Cross uh, to provide uh, so fit, uh, as much parking as possible for, for that, that being four, four, minimum four, 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 four spaces uh, to, to, to alleviate the parking situation in, the, uh, in that part of the neighborhood. Second. All right, so we have a motion um, on the floor by George, seconded by Tony, and it's, it's to, uh, to uh, legalize the uh, change of occupancy at 5557 North Washington Street. Um, from a restaurant um, offices and 16 residential units to 20 residential units um, with the um, what the proviso will say that the adjacent parking lot on Cooper and, and Cross be used for the minimum four spaces um, so to be utilized to be utilized by um, by the occupants of 557 North Washington Street. Yeah, correct. Where the whole program? Yeah, it can be. I'll tie, any of the five I'll tie it yeah, any of the five buildings, but I'll tie it to 55 North Washington because of the separate addresses. And that Dan just got a little put that right and says that we have an email. It's like four tomorrow. Tomorrow. All in favor. All in favor. Before you go to your hearing, uh, Manny. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. This thing all in favor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What's that, 11? Everyone's here today? Yeah. 11 zero. When's your date in CBA for the day? Uh, September 10th. September 10th. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you.